This thing here, folks, this thing, it's a blessing and a curse. How to be present having a phone like this, it's impossible. Hey, guess what? It's Monday, 11 o'clock. Welcome to the Chaz Palmetary Show. We have um, so many, you know, so many people want these solo episodes. They just like when I do solo. So I'm, I'm going to be doing some more solos because I enjoy it. I mean, I love having guests, love having writers, actors, directors, comedians. I had an astronaut, basketball players, movie stars. It's like, it's fun. Songwriters. I, you know, whatever I feel, that's the great thing about having your own show. You just put on whoever you like. And I enjoyed it. And if you like it, I hope you like it too. I talk to people that I like to talk to. And I hope that you like to talk to them. But before I do that, chazpalmentary.net. John, where am I? February 9th, you're going to be in West Palm Beach, Florida at the Kravis Performing Arts Center. Palm, West Palm Beach? Oh, God. Love it. And then March 9th, you're going to be Niagara Falls at the Avalon Theater. And then March 23rd, you're going to be in New London, Connecticut at the... Guard Art Center? Yeah, Garden. G-A-R-D-E. Yeah. Yeah, when am I going to be at uh, West Palm Beach? West Palm Beach, you're going to be there on February 9th. February 9th. Yeah, I like West Palm Beach. Got a lot of friends down there. It's going to be great. If you never saw the show, please come to see it because it's the show that started it all before the movie, before the musical, and I have a couple of surprise things happening with that show, but I can't tell you yet. But all I could say is, if I were you... I would come to the Tribeca Film Festival. Anyway, so, uh, so John, so many people have been calling and said they've been complaining about the phone. This thing here, folks, this thing, it's a blessing and a curse. How to be present having a phone like this, it's impossible. You know, I said it on another episode. My wife and I, sometimes we wake up in the morning, she grabs her phone, I grab mine. We don't talk for the first hour in bed. That's it. Nobody talks anymore. I mean, it used to be where people talked. People wrote letters. People dialed and, and you spoke to them on the phone. Now everybody texts each other. Uh, nobody talks. I saw my daughter. My daughter goes to uh, University of Michigan. She was downstairs with some of her girlfriends from Michigan. They were here on a break. And I see four of them sitting there on their phone texting at the same time in different parts of the house. And I'm saying, what the hell? I said, does anybody, any of you guys talk? Who are you talking to? They were talking to each other. Texting in the same house. Ah. Uh, Guys, you got to be present. You got to look people in the eye. That's how you tell what a person is like. You got to look them in the eye, man. I mean, look, look. See, I'm getting like beeps. Look at this. Well, the best is when you go to a restaurant and you see both the kids and the adults on their phones. That's right. At a restaurant, the kids and the adults. And nobody talks. You know what? I try to do it, but it's hard. And I'm guilty myself. And we, we sit down at the table and we have the phones out. You can't do that. When you're having dinner, you got to put the phones away. You know what? You, I never knew. And listen, I'm guilty of this too. When you walk into a restaurant and you're having a meeting with someone, or just you're having dinner, and you take your phone out and you put it right next to you on the table, do you know that's rude? It's rude. I'm saying to you, especially if you're having a meeting, um, a great guy. Oh my God, I got to get it. He, I, I always like to give credit. He said that when you take out your phone at a restaurant and you put it down there, you're telling the other person that this is more important than you. You don't have my full attention. Think about that. Even if you turned it over, he said, same thing. Take the phone off the table, shut the sound off. John. What are some things that people could stay present on? Well, listen, I think one of the things that changed my life the most was I stopped checking my phone for the first hour I wake up. That's big. 
And that has a lot of scientific backing to it where the blue light affects your brain chemistry. And if you open up a bunch of emails or you go on social media, you usually start your day off with a negative mindset. Wow. Actually, the blue light does affect you, they say, right? It does. It mimics daylight. And I mean, if, if you're just waking up and then you get a blast of daylight in your face, you're not going to be happy about it. Right. Now, I know people, because I did it in the very beginning too, but I stopped. So some of the negative effects that checking right. your phone in the morning has is stress and anxiety. That is the number one reason why you shouldn't check your phone first thing in the morning. How about this? I know people that check the phone during the night. How's that? Well, that's even worse because that slow, um, changes up your, um, I forgot what they call this, circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythms, that's right. It changes it up again because the phone mimics daylight. So when you check that in the middle of the night, there's a lot of Do you imagine effects. waking up at middle of the night and you grab your phone like you want to see who called? Or you want to check how many followers you have? Or how's your post doing? Come on, folks. It says here it um, suppresses the production of melatonin in your brain. Really? It, that's the hormone that regulates your sleep. So if you're disrupting that in the middle of the night, you're going to have trouble falling back asleep. I mean, I did that. I remember in the beginning, I used to do that and the very years ago, many years ago. And I said, no, this is not good because I couldn't go to sleep. I thought about uh, what I just looked at on the phone, the emails. and Guys, sleep is so important. Don't look at the phone. Who gives a shit? Everybody's got followers. Oh, they got more followers than me. Oh, my God. You know what? I, I didn't do this podcast to get followers. I really didn't. I got, I got you know, a decent, nice bunch of followers I have. But I, I do it because I enjoy doing it, number one, and I enjoy talking to people on camera. And I do it because if you like the people that I like, then you, you watch my show. You know, like I said, I, you know, I talk to writers, directors, actors, and just sometimes old school people, people that grew up in the neighborhood, John, old school. Uh, I have the show with uh, the wonderful Catherine Narducci and Tara Conatrasi. Anna Tracy. Kind of Tracy. I keep messing her name. She gets mad at me. Tara Conatrasi and Catherine Narducci, and we do some of those. We're there on my show. We have a, we have a ball. We have fun. Everything can't be about just getting followers, folks. You know? Well, you got to realize, too, a lot of the stuff you see on social media, that's the best of. People well, aren't going to show you the negatives in their lives. I mean, sometimes they do, and sometimes they have depressing stories, but nine right. out of ten times, they're showing you the best of. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think of that. And it depresses people, too, because you're like, oh, why isn't my life as good as theirs? Or why am I not on vacation? It's just because that's what they're showing you. That's what, what else is going you. on in their life? And I, you know what? And they, and they have a thing about that, especially for young girls, especially for young girls, 12, 13, 14, where they look at these lives of these certain kids, and maybe they, they don't have as many followers as certain. And they, you know, it hurts their self-esteem. It really does. There's bullying going on. Uh, but I think uh, in as years go on, they're going to stop this, where you cannot have a phone unless you're a certain age. Well, what do you think about the kids that they call iPad babies, where essentially when the kids are crying, they just hand them an iPad, and they the parents just don't do any work? Wow. They call iPad babies? They're called iPad babies, yeah. The kids are crying. The parents say, here's your iPad, here's your phone. Watch your favorite TV show and shut up. Well, I mean, that's literally like... Drugs. You're giving the kid his fix. And as he grows older, he's going to want his fix. I wonder what it's, it's going to look like in the future. Because when you give a kid an iPad, it releases a lot of dopamine. The same thing happens when a lot of addicts take drugs. So what's going to be the effects 10, 15 years from now on these people? Well, that's why a lot of people, you ever notice a lot of people just can't sit through a movie anymore? Movies become shorter. Movies are like 90 minutes now. Nobody wants to uh, just stand there or sit and watch a movie. I see my own children sometimes. You know, uh, everybody's the, attention span. The ad comes the on. Next boop, thing. skip. Boop, skip. You know, watch the whole thing, man. Watch it. Yeah, you that's know. why thirty-minute series are doing well. That's why podcasts are usually around thirty minutes because anything beyond that, people just are disinterested. They do. I mean, it's amazing about that. People just don't want to 
Just read. How about read? What happened to reading? What happened to reading? Nobody wants to read anymore? Dante brought up this great quote. It says, um, not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. And that's from Harry Truman. That's from Harry Truman. I mean, that's how important reading is. Let me say that again. Not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. Wow. You know, I used to read so much more. Now I read, I have my reading spurts. I'll read for like a week or two, and then I'll get a few days or a week where I'm, where I'm not. I got to discipline myself a little more. Even if you read 20 pages a day, they said, 20 pages, 30 pages a day, you'll finish a book soon, right? I mean, yeah, this book here, I, I always keep this book on my desk by Ryan Holiday. Discipline is destiny. Ryan Holiday, has got a great website. He talks about the Stoics. He's really, I like him a lot. Uh, smart guy. And it, but it is discipline. You got to read. I mean, look at look at all the. I've all. I, mean, I you think about. You know what I always say? Look at all these books I have. Okay. I wish I could read all of them. I don't, but I, I try to read as much as I can. But it's like having all these friends in your house. Oh, I wish I could go back in time and. And talk to Shakespeare and talk to uh, uh, Eugene O'Neill, you know, and talk to uh, uh, No Coward. Well, you can. The books. You have the books. Just go back and read. You know, I always wanted to read like the top hundred classics. There's that, I, you know, I, 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 I like to, you know, Moby Dick and Catcher in a Rye and I love to read Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner was really ahead of his time, you know. But it, it, the more you read, the more you learn, the more you you get involved in life, and the smarter you get. To be honest with you, you know. Why do you think reading has more of a significant impact other than watching like a YouTube video or the news or something like that? I know reading is just more educated people read. Well, because when you're watching a, a, a video, I mean, you it's you could be distracted. You're looking at it, and, but it doesn't. But when you read something, it makes an impact in your mind. Not to say that a film can't do the same. It can. A great film. A great film. You know, I remember seeing some great films where, when I saw Spotlight, I thought Spotlight was a great film. I thought Saving Private Ryan was a great film. Uh, Shawshank Redemption, great film. Those are some films when I saw Spartacus. I was like, wow. It made me think about that when I saw that. And of course, my favorite film, uh, On the Waterfront, with Rod Steiger and Marlon Brando. Do you think more people are relying on phones just because they have more of a dependency on like validation? People want to post about their lives and then be validated by others saying, oh, you, you're having such I think, a great I think I think it's part of that. But I also think that people are on phones because it is so damn easy. And it's so easy to get a shot of adrenaline. Just easy. Oh, my God, he called. Oh, she called. Oh, my God, look at this. Look at this site, what they said. You know, don't get me wrong. Uh... It takes talent to like put a podcast together and do things, but sometimes you know you have these podcasts that are just shock, and they last for a while, but they don't last for a long time. You know, I think Joe Rogan has a great podcast. I mean, and and Joe Rogan's a lot like, you know, what I like to do. I like to talk to people that I feel like talking to, and he does that. Oh, well, he's the one. Look, he's the the master. He's the one who started this, really started it, and kept it up. And you look at Joe Rogan's podcast and you put that as, you know. Oh, it's yeah. the number one in the world. Number one in the world. I mean, I don't know if that could ever happen again, but somebody matched that. But that's pretty uh, impressive. But that was also, podcasts were a medium that was shunned upon in the beginning too, and they still are. Somebody like Howard Stern, he hates podcasters. And he says it's a dead-end career and people shouldn't do it. And anybody could do a podcast. But I feel like there's real talent. How is it a dead-end career? I, I, I don't understand. And I like Howard Stern a lot. I mean, he broke the mold. So I would, you know, and I think Joe Rogan broke the mold. 
And it ain't no dead end career with him, I can tell you that. He's done pretty well. So um, I I think he's right in a way. I think some podcasts are just dead end things. Yeah. I don't do it as as a career. I do it as because I enjoy it, you know? And that's why they do pretty well, too, because, I mean, you, you talk about stuff and talk to people that you want to hear about. Yeah. I mean, I remember speaking to Michael Massimino, the astronaut. I met him, and I said, hey, would you want to be on the show? He goes, I don't know, Chaz, I'm an astronaut. I go, I know, I love it. I want to talk to you. And he came on the show, and it did very well. And, uh, I, you know, I did the old school guys. They said, hey, I don't know, what am I going to talk about? I said, just be yourself, man. It was like, you know, Sandy Blue Eyes and and Squiggy and uh, Big Time Tommy and a lot of those guys. You know, those guys are like dinosaurs. People don't see those guys anymore. They're from a throwback from the old neighborhood, you know? I think it, it's such a great medium because there's no time limit on it either. You can hear people talk. You're not cut off by commercials. Well, you are sometimes, but I mean, like, yeah. you don't have a time limit. There's no time limit. Right. And it's great for me, and I really enjoy it because I could publicize my my live performances. I could publicize my movies that are coming out or TV shows or a lot of wonderful things, you know? I mean, uh, thinking, oh, I, oh, he's going to be in Florida. Oh, he's going to be at, oh, he's going to be at the Paramount Theater in Huntington. I got to go see him. Well, you know what I found interesting? Last... Um Last election cycle, Joe Rogan pitched this idea where the debate between Trump and Biden should be held on a podcast since there's no time limit, no political uh, motivations in terms of monetary value and commercial and stuff like that. Wow. So I think that would be a great way to have a presidential debate. No time limit. Well, let me break this to you. I mean, that would be an incredible way, but I, I doubt if... If they'll agree to that, or if their if their handle is Trump agreed to it, Biden did oh, not. Oh, Trump agreed to it. Yeah, really? He did. He wanted Rogan to host it. Really? Yep. And Biden said no. Biden said no. Yeah, no, they're not going to make him. I would wouldn't. You never know what they're going to ask. Yep. All bets are off. No, no. I just think it'd be an interesting thing to hear people's ideas out because in an hour, how how could you really hear from ten different candidates and what they have to say? Yeah, I, these debates, I, I don't know. You know, I would like to see, the debates that I would like would be you're not allowed to put down your opponent. You got a case to make? Make it. about the. You're going to be a, a good president? Make it. Most of these debates are just about telling us how much the opponent didn't do I don't want to hear that. I want to hear what you're going to do. It turns into a smear campaign. Yeah. I think you should not be allowed to be negative towards your opponent. You know, and they should have like a, um, uh, you know what would be good if they had like four or five people there? be hard to find them, non-biased people that if you say, if you say something that's not true and it's a lie, they could put it up and put a screen up. And, sh- and see you saying that. Say, oh, a live fact checker? A fact checker right there. But real fact checker, you know, not bullshit. And they would say, well, you know, Mr. President, I'm sorry. You, you're you saying it now, but you didn't do that, and here's the proof. Boom. And then, okay, next question. You know, then, then people would really watch what the hell they say. They'd be accounted for what they said. And uh, I, I, I would like that because, you know what? They all bullshit. And I'm not talking Republican and Democrat. They all do. All of them. I I wish someday, I wish someday that they just all tell the truth, but, you know, I don't know. Is that ever going to happen? Maybe that's why they say politics is such a dirty game. I'm so tired. I'm And I'm sure everybody out there is so tired. They say they're going to do this, they're going to do that. They get into office, and it's the same shit. How could that be? Are we fools? I guess we are. I guess we're just fools. It's interesting, going back to the whole thing with the phones, is I think it was President Obama, when he was still running, 
he said the next presidential election will be won on Twitter. And he took the phones as a platform to use himself and to promote himself, which I thought was a genius idea. And I think RFK is doing the same thing where he says the next presidential um, campaign will be won on podcasts. Wow, he said that? He did, yeah. And he really, that's why he's doing all these podcasts and going on tour, um, because he really believes he can get his message out there within the two, three hours that he speaks on these things. Wow. I like uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. I mean, I know him. Um, he lived right next to me. He used to live right next to me. He moved now. And, uh, you know, he seemed like a good guy. He didn't seem like he has an agenda. And uh, he's got some good points. Yeah, I just think up. it's interesting how these presidents, each election now, they're finding new medians to campaign on. I think, you know what, what I think we should do, and again, I don't know, maybe the phone, we talk about the phone, I know this episode, but maybe the phone could, if we could only get another, a third party, you know, have, we should have maybe even a fourth party, have some different choices to make. Yeah, I hate how it comes down to two teams. The game is rigged. It's it's Democrat or Republican. The game is rigged, bro. That's it. You know, the game is rigged. And I wish we could unrig it. I wish it should be like term limits for everybody. There's a term limit for the president. Why can't there be a term limit for congressmen and, and uh, you know, senators? I also think they should have a test to get into office. Yeah, I mean, nobody should be a senator for 55 years. I mean, come on, guys. It should be two terms, then you got to go out to the real world, get a job. You hear that, folks? Term limits. Talk to your congressman about that. Well, think about this, too. I mean, there's uh, they should be they should have to take a test before they get into office. Doctors have to take tests. Lawyers have to take tests. Right. But somebody like Trump, I'm not saying he's good or bad, but I'm saying like maybe he should have had a test before he went into office. Same thing with Joe Biden. See if, if they're competent and capable. Yeah, I agree with that. Something to prove their point. Again, doctors and lawyers have to do it. Why shouldn't the president have to? I mean, I think when you get a certain age, uh, you can't be on the Supreme Court and be like, if you're not there cognitively, you know, if you don't have the ability to do it, if you're 85, 90, some people can. I'm not saying you can't now. I'm not putting down old age because some people, at, at, I've seen people at 85 sharp as a tack. But I think it should be like, you know, 25 year term limit on the Supreme Court. So, uh, same argument could probably be made about a driver's license. You should have to take a test after a certain age to make sure that you're still cognizant and you can still drive. Yeah, but you, you, say you're in your 90s, you want to drive? I mean, that's like, could some people do it? Yes. But you should be able, you should have to take a test for that, right? How about taking a test to run the damn country? It's dangerous. And that's why all these, like I said, lawyers and doctors, they have to take a test because they have to prove that they're worthy. I think if you're an airline pilot, I think you have to stop after 72 or 75. Yep. Just because it becomes dangerous after that I mean, point. I think you have to stop, period. Surgery? For doctors? No, a pilot. Oh, pilot. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I could have swore there was a... See if, see if there has to be a, like a, uh, a time where a pilot must retire. It has to be, John. You... 65 to 67. Really? Yep. That's young. It says, as of July 2023, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to raise the mandatory retirement age for commercial airline pilots from 65 to 75. Oh, so you could be 75. Yeah, they raised it from 65 to 75. So you could fly up to 75. I'm sorry, 67. 65 to 67. I was going to say 75. No, no, no. 67 is the cutoff. That was. So at 67, you must retire. Yep. But it just says commercial airlines. I don't know about other Yeah, commercial airlines. Yeah. I mean, what does that tell you? 67. I mean, you want to be 90 and and run the country? That's. I don't care who you are, Republican or Democrat. Let's hold up here for a second. You know, I agree with that, John. Should be some sort of benchmark. Just for anything. Anything that's a professional career. Yeah, I mean, doctors, no, doctor, you know, a doctor could go as long as he can. But let's talk about what we were talking about being present. We, like we said on the phone, the phone is, um, it's a curse. What are some other things they talked about, about the phone? Another one I found interesting, it says decreased create creativity. It says constant exposure to exter- external stimuli, especially negative news or stressors, may hamper your ability to think creatively and approach challenges. 
Yeah, I could see that. I mean, you know what my shrink told me many years ago? He said, look, you want to get rid of half your stress? Don't look at the news. And I stopped doing that for, you know, and it's, it's good. You look at the news, you get so depressed because everything, everything is in the mind. Everything. Henry Ford said, if you think you're right or you think you're wrong, you're probably right. It's great, right? I love that. If you think you're right or you think you're wrong, you're probably right. Oh, I love that. Right. There's been times where I've taken breaks from the news just because it is overwhelming. And ultimately, what am I going to do about it? There's nothing I can do besides watch the news and get upset about it. Right. And the problem is with these phones is breaking news. All the time. Every minute of every day. And sometimes it's not even true. You find out later, oh, that was bullshit. That wasn't true. Breaking news every damn day. All day you're reading about mass shootings or this or that. It drives me crazy. Did you ever hear the story about Jim Carrey in Hawaii? What about Jim Carrey in Hawaii? What? So he got a breaking news alert on his phone that a nuke was coming to hit Hawaii. I heard about that. So he went out to the shore, stood on the shoreline and said, this is how it's going to end. It's beautiful. And um, it was a false alarm. It was a false alarm. You know, that's the insanity about this fucking phone. You get on these phones and you can reach what? It goes viral, you hit 25, 30, 40 million people. Yeah. It's crazy. And there's a lot of fake news too that goes around. A lot of misinformation that's spread. I mean, Fake news, folks. Rapidly. You're right. Well, I, we hope you got something out of this about be present. Stay off your damn phone. I mean, that first hour in the morning is big, right, John? It changed my life. It really changed did. Changed your life. The first hour in the morning, get off the damn phone. Talk to your wife. Talk to your lover. Don't stay on the damn phone. This way you can talk to each other in bed. My wife and I, in the beginning, we, for two hours, we didn't say a word to each other when we got up. We stopped doing that shit. Okay? You got to talk to each other, folks. Stay present. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, chaspalmentary.net. Check out the one-man show. Come and say hello. Don't forget my restaurants. Uh, 30 West 46th Street, Charles Palmentary's, and 264 Main Street. Go to my website, charlespalmentary.net. God bless you. See you next week.